Dames, uh, dus graag iedereen die ik hier veel, nou ik u uh, welkom heten. Welkom you on our club. Mm. En uh, zoals u kunt zien uh, hebben wij nu een uh, bond deelnemersveld uh, jong en oud. The youngest member uh, today present and the oldest member today present here on the, on the chess club. Voor degene die uh, Victor Korsner misschien niet zo goed kennen of niet precies weten hoe de geschiedenis is van Victor Korsner. Uh, Victor Korsner heeft twee keer een match gespeeld uh, om het wereldkampioenschap tegen Karkov. Uh, ik ben ook heel blij dat, uh, dat wij hem vanmiddag hier in ons, in ons midden hebben als simultaangever. Uh, het is toch een, uh, ja, zoals al de Jan Rijks al gezegd is uh, in ons voorgesprekje, een legende in, in de schaakwereld. Een legendary name in de chess world. Uh, Okay, uh, better look at this day. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a good opposition, and uh, we wish you very, uh, very, very good luck today. Okay. So now we can start. Nice game. In my life, I played more than five thousand games. So, uh, I mean, uh, in the in the uh, database, you will find about five thousand games. And uh, well, people who do statistics, they say that I play 70 opening systems. So, so I play uh, against the move e4, I play at least seven systems. I play 5, 6, 5, 6, 6, uh, 9, 6, this, uh, this, this 75 I played as well. Let's say I was four times the Soviet champion. It, is, it, it was not easy task. Uh, I was the first time in the year 1960 and the last, the last the first time uh, in 1970. To be, to be um, the champion of the Soviet Union, well, it was a kind of a feat, you know, just uh, well, against all plots, all conspiracy to become a champion. It was, it was fantastic. I am Grandmaster, but well, there are more than 200 grandmasters. I, I have to show that I am not among 200, but among 10. Yeah, the best, yeah? <laughs> In the year 2001, one German uh, <coughs> journalist asked uh, more than 30 grandmasters to, to answer the question, who was the best uh, player of the 20th? Century. Uh, I was voting for Kasparov, but uh, Fischer won with great margin. So, well, people believe that so, the best player of the 20th century means that the best player, the best player in the uh, history of chess. And of course, uh, well, the way he played, the way he he destroyed the whole Soviet school of chess. A lot, absolutely a lot. To, to mm, do to such a performance, one, one should be crazy. Presumably he is. <laughs> With Fischer I was equal. I won two games, I lost two games and four draws, and also in the Blitz tournament, which he won uh, in the year 1970, uh, easily. I was the only one who beat Fischer. Kasparov. Kasparov, when, when he writes a chapter about me in, in his volumes on the uh, world history of chess, he gives the game I, I won against him. But it's uh, the single game and I, did, I didn't want to even to mention it. Well, it was Kasparov idea just to just to put this game. Yeah, I have a bad score with Kasparov, uh, but nowadays when well, he quit chess, well, he he doesn't play chess any longer. Yes, he for him for his ambition, it is poor, you know, to be the world champion. One million people admire him. When he would become, say, uh, president of Russia. Well, two, 150 million people would um, admire him, okay? That is, that is something else, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I say 1970 Portland, the first match was Karpov in Moscow. It was uh, 
well, not very, not fair match, well, because every, everything, everybody had to uh, work uh, for Karpov. And, uh, and some people who, who wanted to be neutral, who would come uh, just to shake hands with me, they had been reprimanded for, for trying to be friendly. Friendly, well, just a gentleman like uh, with me. Uh, well, I was preparing to the mission of Karpov. As, I, as I've told you, everybody had to help Karpov. Only two people um, offered their help to me. It was Bronstein and Keres. About Keres it was... Mm, well, I always had a bad score against Keres. So he... It was very difficult for me to play against him. He offered his help. It was very nice. But I was afraid that I... I if I start to work with him, I will be... Uh, just uh, submit, get submitted to him. That that when I when I will play Karpov, I will play like Keres, not, not not like myself. And I had to um, I had to reject it. Finally, finally Karpov won the match, and uh, I have been punished for for all my crimes. For uh, well, uh, actually, I uh, uh, well, I was uh, not. Um, Quite, uh, quite obedient to in the Soviet Union, and they they decided to punish me. And somewhere, somewhere at the um, during the closing ceremony of that May, late 1974, I made up my mind to go, just to go to Japan. And uh, well, it was easy to, to make up my mind, but uh, but at that time I was. Uh, I was ostracized of any any term. I, I couldn't I couldn't play either in the Soviet Union or abroad. Just a um, case uh, uh, that was the case of Estonia. Uh, he invited me to play in the uh, in the international tournament in the Soviet Republic of Estonia, and uh, and the, um, the sport committee didn't allow me to play, and they also, uh, well, they also said to Keres that he, he shouldn't violate the, the, well, the situation. But uh, I, I couldn't play in any international tournament in, in the Soviet Union or abroad. So finally, when, when uh, I was allowed to travel, year and a little bit later. Uh, I first played in, in Hastings, uh, 75, 76, and then the second tournament was in Amsterdam, uh, IBM, and, uh, and I say during this tournament I, um, I already, I already um, decided to stay. Uh, when I decided to, um, to stay, I wrote to for for the for the police, I wrote a statement with his help to for applying for political asylum. But I must say that Dr. Erve, uh, well, he was the president of the of the FIDE at that time, and he did a great deal for me because the Soviets tried to um, just to to throw me away from the world um, championship cycle. And, uh, but Dr. Ever firmly stood on my side and uh, that didn't happen. But uh, uh, his secretary, uh, it was Miss Bakker, who was a um, sim uh, sympathizer of uh, communists. And, uh, uh, and when she saw um, this statement written by me for the police, she said, I don't know why, it can be wrong understood uh, by the police. And I was, I was silly enough, I made it softer, and, and then I, I didn't get the political asylum. As I say, I got only the Verbleis in, uh, in Holland, and that was great different, because the people, person who gets political asylum, he, he, the state takes care of him, and, 
and uh, one who has permission to stay. Okay, he stays and then, then goes to another um, uh, another country. Will stay there. So um, that was uh, that was my mistake, and because of that, later I moved to Switzerland, where finally I got the political asylum. It was not so it was not so simple. I got the I got the political asylum when when after the match with uh, uh, Karpov in the Philippines of the Soviet citizenship <laughs> by Brezhnev and so on. I'm telling also the, the other story. The story, people ask me how it happened that I, I lost the game in the, in the famous match in the Philippines. The score was five, top five to five with, with uh, number 21 draws. I lost the game 32 and, and with, with it the match. Some people also asked, well, how, how was it, how it happened? Why, why the dear God did not allow me to win that match? And uh, my, my fan from Geneva sent me, um, sent me a cable, uh, sorry, the God is a communist, something like that. But, uh, but uh, well, it happened 12 years uh, that um, the, uh, the riddle of uh, the match had been solved, finally. In 1990, there was chess Olympiad in um, Novi Sad, Yugoslavia, and there, uh, so I was in, some, in a restaurant together with my friends, and uh, suddenly Mikhail Tal came. Mikhail Tal was my, my big friend, and um, we have been together, um, well, a long time. And then, before the May 1974, he started to work with, with Kappa. And uh, during the match um, in the Philippines, he was together with Kappa. Uh, and uh, he, he was the, the official second. He was uh, just uh, the correspondent of the 64. But, uh, but it was all quite obvious that he, that he works every day with Kapov um, as his uh, trade. And then, uh, well, when I saw uh, Tao um, in the restaurant, I started to throw accusations into his face. You know, Tal, Tal was, a, was a long time ill, and he, he actually was preparing to, to meet uh, with the highest being. So, so he looked to improve um, conditions with me. And instead of, um, uh, yeah, instead of uh, answering to um, accusations, he suddenly said a sentence. Yeah. We all, that if, if you would win the match, you had to be uh, exterminated physically. Everything was ready for that. Mm -hmm. that was, well, he's the only witness. He, and he died well, in, uh, two years later. But, uh, time was changing, and uh, I, was not, I left the Soviet Union once and forever. But, uh, but I was not aware that the Soviet Union would collapse. It collapsed in the year 1991. And people uh, who, uh, well, many people in the Soviet Union believe that I paid good contribution to, uh, to, to help uh, the Soviet Union uh, fall into pieces, yes. And, but still, uh, in the year 1991, uh, the first and the last uh, president of the Soviet Union, Gorbachev, he um, edited uh, verdict where he, he would give um, back the citizenship to 24 intellectuals. And the first and that least was the uh, famous writer Solzhenitsyn, and some of the place 20 was also mine. And, uh, <coughs> From time, from time to time, I visit the uh, fractures of the, of the former Soviet Union. I was already, uh, well, 
16 years I was away, then the first time I came in 1992. And so I visited Ukraine, Russia, uh, Moldavia, uh, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, <coughs> Latvia, <coughs> Estonia. So, so that, uh, well, and people, people greet me, well, in a certain, certain way. I feel, you know, when, uh, when it happened uh, in a long time ago, when, when they forced me, well, in fact, they forced me to go away, and, uh, and the population <coughs> did not say a word for my defense. And now, when they, when they invite me, I feel that they, in a way, they apologize for being silent that time, 30 years ago or earlier. Yeah. That, that what happens. Uh, the average long, longevity of uh, uh, life of a, of a man in the Soviet Union yeah. is 60 years. And uh, uh, when I left the Soviet Union, I made my life longer. Uh, let's say my best friends in general are people of my generation because uh, I show to them that, um, well, what they are capable to do still. Because I, uh, well, for my 76th year, I, uh, I uh, hold it in the bed, well, six, um, even today, well, six uh, hours simultaneously. It is not so bad, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. How do you know the world from my small room? How do you know the world from the window? Well, well, I think I wrote a very good book uh, of these uh, selected games. And uh, uh, at least the people would uh, enjoy my books. <laughs> that, is, that is okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, I'm going to